I think like it's not tough technically, but it, it's kind of like you really have to, uh, you know, develop your soft skills, think about mm. what you have done. So, doctor, um, I want to ask you this. Okay, so right now I'm doing my PhD. Okay, so after my PhD, I have two options. Either I can go to academia, and academia includes that I want to teach, or or do I want to go for a postdoc, or I'll join an in in industry job. so when i'm doing my phd or when i've just started my phd how will i decide that whether i have to go for an industry job or whether i have to go to academia right i i think it all you know um builds up within the say uh, third year of phd right It's like you understand uh, where your interest lies right mm-hmm. so so like um for me when i was you know doing my research doing my experiments and uh, you know the kind of person i am i i like i was never inclined towards academia like i knew that i would be better off in the industry like um uh, but some people like they come with a motivation to join academia right so matlab uh, motivation to pehle se hi hona chahiye मतलब पीएचडी ज्वाइन करने से पहले होना चाहिए कि हाँ ये करेंगे लाइक रफली आई एम नॉट सेइंग कि एकदम सब प्लान कर लिया दस साल वैसे नहीं बट लाइक जस्ट लाइक अ मोटिवेशन कि इसके बाद क्या करना है लाइक ऑलवेज हैव वन स्मॉल गोल जो कि यू नो एवरी वन टू मंथ्स अचीव करना है एंड देन हैव अ लाइक अ बिगर पिक्चर कि पांच साल बाद क्या करना है फाइव ईयर like not like a very you know mm-hmm. rigid plan mm-hmm. but you know rough plan ki ha mujhe yahan jana hai theek hai mm-hmm. ya ye karna hai mm-hmm. that's how you can like you know move forward right if you don't have a plan then mm-hmm. even if you're working hard you will go nowhere mm-hmm. so so wo ek rough idea hona chahiye when you are joining phd ki tumko kaha pe jana hai theek hai and it's very natural ki wo change hoega matlab when so basically mm-hmm. when like you know during your phd you come in contact with different kinds of people who mm-hmm. motivate you and then you want to become like him or her right so uh you know that can change but then a rough idea is very necessary mm-hmm. or fir when you are in your third year you kind of know like you kind of should know that mm-hmm. okay i am not going to academia and i'm going to industry because Uh, because you know otherwise you'll be like you know uh, clueless right mm-hmm. like and i have seen many people who are so invested in the degree that mm-hmm. they don't think what they are going to do after mm-hmm. the degree mm-hmm. and you know then it becomes like very tough to get where you want and then you kind of do what others do and then you just you know lose motivation like that's mm. the worst thing that can happen mm. so yeah so third year you should kind of really know that yeah i am going to you know industry academy third fourth year whatever mm. like mm. when when time is coming to wrap up mm. and then once you start writing your thesis that's the time you should start building for your career ahead like mm. you know so Uh, nowadays i i don't know about other institutes but uh, in iisc right like your chapters are kind of written because you your chapters are your journals right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you really don't have to work hard to write theses anymore because you are kind of putting your publications as your chapters mm-hmm. so you have four publications you write them down as chapters and then you write just write the introduction so it mm-hmm. kind of takes about a month maybe to write a thesis but that time like you were more or less free right like mm. you you know that i am done kind mm. of so that is a very good mental space to start building up your mm. future mm-hmm. so if you, if you are you know planning to go to academia right build that kind of network and um, i mean in, in india i find you know you, you like you have to be in good terms with a lot of professors mm. and you know in general and mm. then uh, also if you are planning for you know academia you, you you should have good number of publications in good journals and then you know ha- have a good exposure in terms of you know uh, working in famous labs and you know try to get a 
postdoc in a good institute where you know the professors are kind of uh, famous in their area mm-hmm. so that kind of goal mm-hmm. right and uh, so you know start building up from the time you are writing your thesis and better if you are doing it earlier like mm-hmm. you know so the earlier the better mm-hmm. so um, but by the time you are writing your thesis you like you must Mm-hmm. and then if you are planning to move to industry right um there are lots of ways going about that stuff like so basically um, um so if you are looking for say a job then you build that kind of a network like you you talk to people who are already you know in the industry and mm-hmm. um, you know so the other thing is like just throwing your cv around and you know just telling somebody this is my mm-hmm. cv see mm-hmm. if you can give me a job like nobody will give you a job nobody is sitting here you know waiting to give you a job so mm-hmm. like i get like what one or two cvs every day on linkedin like you know look at my cv like i am not like i am not even in a position to give a job like mm-hmm. i can help you uh, with your cv but the other thing is like when you are sending me that cv right you are making mm. a statement that you haven't researched me like yes. as in yes you don't know me yes. right you you don't know me and you are sending me the cv because you are sending 100 other people mm-hmm. and it kind of leaves a bad perspective about the person who is doing that so mm. you know organically try to know people mm-hmm. like you know ask questions about what they are doing and mm. like this is a very good um, question like mm. you know i i just saw your profile and uh, you you have this title say mm. whatever say my title will have mm. what is it exactly about it it, mm. it kind of is very interesting so and then everybody would talk about their job mm, yes, like yes. 100% <laughs> <Obviously>. <laughs> because people love to talk about what they are doing right <laughs> so that is a very good um conversation starter and building up you know your network organically so so yeah so you know keep conversing with people know what they did and then there are lots of free resources on google on how to you know write your cv for an industrial position mm-hmm. and do all of that while you are writing your thesis so that like by the time your defense is over mm-hmm. you have something in your hand like so so, so so basically to wrap up i think when you're entering phd you should know more or less what you want to do as in like broadly academia or industry or any like science communicator or whatever right and mm-hmm. um, like in in that direction mm-hmm. and then in your probably third or fourth year like final year or mm-hmm. pre final mm-hmm. year you should exactly know like mm-hmm. okay i am going mm-hmm. to do this right and then when you're writing your thesis you should like start planning like mm. you know like really planning it to the t mm. so that's my suggestion great that's great okay so uh, as you said that uh, we have to be starting to plan when we are writing a thesis right so mm-hmm. um, okay let let us suppose uh, i wish to move to in- industry after my phd so are there specific things that i need to take care as a part of my phd work which makes my transition to industry easy okay um i think uh, like you know you can only go to industry if you are doing a certain kind of research you know what i mean like mm. more uh, you know uh, experimental or more um, um like mostly more experimental right mm. and uh, even like if you're w- working on theoretical modeling and all mm. of that that has scope in the industry right so anyways like the work you're doing on phd that kind of you know uh, decides whether there is and there is a, a market for that right mm. so you don't have to change anything in terms of the research that you are doing but what you have to do is like if if you want to move to industry is kind of you know change your mindset right. so as for example like you know when you are applying for an industrial position nobody cares about your journals 
Mm. <laughs> so we as PhDs, we kind of try to highlight our <laughs> publications and all of that. Yes. It's a very common uh, mm. tenacity. <laughs> but um, in industry, nobody cares. So, you know, you, you just put a link to your research kit mm. profile or your LinkedIn profile where you have updated your publications. So, you know, all these resources are avail again available free online. So you can, you know, start preparing to write your industrial CV and then you will be called for interview from one uh, company or other, right? So then also together with how you're writing your CV, you should also prepare for this kind of interviews. Like in India, I, I think most of the interviews are more technical, like mm. in, in say Intel India or um, Samsung Labs India or IBM India. Like, so all, all the multinational companies in India kind of probably have a very different interview process. Mm. Like they are more like, uh, tell me about uh, wave theory. Uh, mm. yeah, I'm just like giving mm. an example. So, so it, it's more um, uh, academic oriented, even the industrial job positions are more academic oriented. But like if you if you are applying for jobs abroad, right, the process is like completely different. So um, they they are more so they kind of have a have a mindset that you are a PhD, you know stuff. Like and that's like you know that should be the attitude. Like always, mm -hmm. like we are studying something for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. We will know stuff. We'll probably know more than what they know, right? On our area of research so there's no point trying to ask you what is wave theory mm. if you are doing research on that particular topic so uh, uh, like uh, interviews abroad is more about your uh, soft skills like okay. so how so they will ask you questions where they will judge your attitude so mm -hmm. and it, it goes on for you know one hour or one hour like one hour 30 minutes so they will give you a situation and then they will you know ask how you will react to that mm. situation so mm. so it, it's more about you know having a, a shift in our attitude like mm. so so i think like so in terms of uh, interviews abroad i think like it's not tough technically but it, it's kind of like you really have to uh, you know develop your soft skills think about mm. what you have done so that's a different kind of preparation and then again if you're uh, like going for interviews in india uh, well, I haven't given one, but what I have heard from friends, I think it's more about knowing your subject, like, you know, your basics. So they ask you questions on that. And then, uh, like, they ask you very set questions as well. Mm -hmm. as in, like, mm -hmm. So if somebody has given an interview in Qualcomm, uh, you should ask him or her what the questions were, because <laughs> more or less, they'll ask you the same questions. Yes, yes, this happens. So, this happens. so, you know, so basically prepare for your CV, prepare for your interview, prepare yourself, brush your mm -hmm. skills, like, you know, work on yourself. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Okay. So coming on to the similar point uh, uh, that if I have did, decided that I want to shift to academia after my PhD. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that I need to take care of while doing my PhD, will, will, which will make my shift easier from PhD yeah. to academia? I like, um, uh, I don't know about uh, positions again. I don't know about positions abroad because I haven't, like I have done my PhD from India, right? And um, like I have worked in foreign labs, like as in uh, labs outside of India. And um, and the process is kind of, is a bit different, I would say. Like I haven't, I haven't been to US though, but um, like in European labs, right? The process is kind of different. So even your PI is like a senior researcher in Europe. So, you know, because most research institutes are completely research institutes. So, um, you know, the, the, the PIs don't take classes as in like mm. they don't teach. So, um, so they are also, you know, scientific researchers and they kind of do work with you. Mm -hmm. So, so it's kind of, it's more of a friendly mm -hmm. stuff there, you know, mm -hmm. but in India, I think uh, stress is given on publications a lot. Like, uh, 
uh, which I hate. <laughs> but um, so if you have like, you know, great publications and then you, you have a degree from a foreign university uh, and that's sad. Like, mm-hmm. so basically if, uh, the, the professors in good institutes in India are actually people who have done their degree from abroad, which is mm-hmm. such an irony, right? Mm-hmm. So, 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 so yeah, so, you know, that, that, so I don't know, like people who are doing PhD from India, I mean, I know people that, so, uh, say people from INC, they are professors in IIT, um, IITs, right? Mm. So, I mean, there are obviously instances where people from PhD, like people from uh, P- doing PhD from Indian institutes are, you know, taking up uh, academic positions. But then most of the professors that I know um, are professors in, say, IIT Bombay or ISC or IIT Delhi have degrees from foreign universities. Mm. And um, uh, so, yeah, so I, so people who are doing PhD in India, uh, my advice to them if they want to move to academia is that focus on, you know, doing good publications. Mm. Uh, doing more you know futuristic uh, research as in like um w- research that is trending like mm-hmm. so that you know you can get a position um in like a research uh, mm-hmm. as in like a teaching position or whatever because uh, like in in iits or iacs like when they take people right so they they look at your uh, area of research so sometimes you might be very qualified but, uh, you know, IS is not looking for a professor mm-hmm. working in, say, say you are working in nanoparticles. Right? So you are very qualified. But IS is not looking for people working on nanoparticles. Mm. So then you won't be, you know, invited for uh, interview or whatever. So that's why, like, you know, area of research also matters when you are uh, working in, when you are planning to move to academia. And obviously, like maintaining good relationship with, you know, professors so that uh, they can refer you. And reference is a big thing, uh, probably, when uh, you are planning to move to academia, I think. So so all these things, like, uh, I think, academic, like, moving to academia is probably, like, for me, from my perspective, is more tricky. But, um, but yeah, I mean... If you if you are focused from the very beginning and you, you know you're working towards it, I think it's possible. So one last thing that I want to ask you, okay. So if you are given a chance to go uh, five years back, let's say five, 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 five years back, and you still get a chance to choose between industry or academia, so what will you choose? Yeah, I can, uh, like industry, like, uh, <laughs> so basically, when I started my PhD, I had no plans to go to the academia whatsoever. Like, mm-hmm. so it's not chance that I am in Intel right now. It, I just w- like, you know, work towards it. So even when I was um, like, uh, starting my PhD, I, I actually wanted to you know start my own company like i want to i wanted to patent my research and start my own company so i had no intention at all to be in academia whatsoever so so <laughs> there's no there's no point of choosing because <laughs> there was no choice at all like i never thought of academia at all okay that's good that's good so thank you so much for your answer thank you so much no problem mm.